serve as the secretary for the DNC, um, being the first African-American secretary, um, certainly first African-American woman secretary of the party. And it's been a lovely experience for me to meet Democratic faithfuls around the country, to spend time particularly with young Democrats who are excited about the party, excited about um, politics. I mean, that's how I grew up. So it's been, it's uh, really been a, a fun opportunity for me. And I was honored uh, to be asked to have the position. Um, the leadership of the DNC, the vice chair, the chair, the vice chair, and me, the secretary, have been asked uh, to, in their hometown to host events uh, for uh, the party. I mean, it's probably not news that politicians fundraise. And uh, the one that they've asked me to do was, uh, at, while the Ravens are playing an away game, uh, to host a watch party. And that's what's happening at a local bar. At which one? Uh, I think it's one downtown. I'm not sure exactly. You don't, you don't know the name? No. Well, if you want to make sure that you get there, I can make sure that I get you the name. Well, I just, I just wanted to know the details because it's down here or in, in Detroit? Here. Here. Okay. I don't know. I'm, I'm confused about Detroit. Doesn't it involve a skyhawk? No. <laughs> what, any public resources be used? It's a DNC purpose? fundraiser. So no. No. Mayor, are you satisfied with the uh, state's attorney? But I'm sorry, but to get back to your point, I'll make sure that you, you know, I, you're very interested in my DNC fundraising, so I'll make sure you have an opportunity to get the information just in case you want to stop by. Thank you. Have some fun with us. Well, it is unusual, uh, I guess, it, you know, for a mayor in the city to be, to be you know, taking What's unusual? It is unusual for a mayor to be a DNC secretary, and I think it's a big move on the, on uh, the part of the Obama administration and the party. I mean, they understand that mayors are getting things done for the country. They've elevated the position. If you looked at the, the uh, convention, you saw mayors pay, playing very prominent roles in the convention. They know that at a time where there's gridlock in the Congress uh, that we need to project to um, the Democrats across the country that uh, we are getting things done. So it is unusual and it is certainly uh, an honor for me to serve in this position. And, um, you know, between my role as uh, second um, vice president for the Conference of Mayors and the DNC, I appreciate any opportunity that I can to shine a positive light on Baltimore and the things that we're doing. Thank you. But it's, you know, so it's not that. unusual for, for uh, politicians to fundraise. That, yeah. All right. Yeah, sorry. sorry. And, and just to follow up one last second, where's the money for the fundraiser going? That's to the DNC. To the DNC. It's a DNC fundraiser. All right. Um, the state's attorney Fun released, times. Uh, sorry. The state's attorney released a single sentence from the autopsy. Um, you know, you had written a letter urging, you know, a quick resolution to this case. Are you satisfied with what he's released? And would you ask him to bring this case in front of the grand jury, which, you know, had, is not normally done, but used to be done in these types of cases? With respect to the grand jury, I think the investigation is still going on. Um, the uh, state's attorney released some information, made it very clear that, that uh, his work isn't done, so I think uh, it might be premature uh, to make those calls. What about the fact we only released one sentence? Do you think the public deserves to know more about the autopsy? I mean, they are technically under public information, and they're only releasing a very small excerpt, which really doesn't give us a clear picture. So it, it's a very delicate balancing act that I think the state's attorney is, is um, trying to walk in the sense that he wants to, it's clear, I mean, he's uh, listening. And everyone has, has heard, uh, you know, my calls, the family's calls, community call, for uh, more information. It's understandable um, that you know that that everyone is frustrated with you know how long this process takes. But you have to balance that frustration with the fact that um, while we're pushing for transparency and openness, we don't want to do it at the expense of the investigation. So while the investigation is still going on, as I said, it, it is a, a delicate balancing act. Mayor, you're a supporter of Anthony Brown. Mm -hmm. um, how do you rate 
his handling of the healthcare website? Do you think he was too hands off? No, I I think that no matter where you look, uh, there are there are opportunities for improvement when it comes to the rollout of uh, websites across the country. Maryland is is no exception. Uh, the the thing that I that I appreciate about uh, the lieutenant governor is his willingness to step up, you know, accept responsibility, and look for solutions to fix it. We know that in, in anything that we do, uh, that we can anticipate something not going the way we want it. I think the measure of uh, a, uh, a leader is, you know, are they willing to step up, say yes, um, mistakes were made, and my goal is to fix it, and, and that's what he's doing. Uh, and I believe it's because he believes as I believe that it's more it is while it's uh, I think it's probably fun uh, you know when uh, to the, the, this, this political sport of you know whose fault is it you know who can I play got you with now at the end of the day this is about getting people health care and that is something that's very important to lieutenant governor and very important to me. When Congressman Van Hollen called it a mess um, do you agree with that assessment? Um, I think that there are opportunities for improvements. Uh, I wouldn't have used those words, but you know, he's he's certainly entitled to uh, his opinion. I want to jump back to the West autopsy. There's mm -hmm. a hearing tonight uh, before the Public Safety Committee to explore why did it take five months as opposed to the national standard of 90 days. Uh, they asked for the police department and the state chief medical examiner's office to come tonight. The state medical examiner said, we're not coming tonight. We have no plans to because the case is under investigation. Just wanted to get your thoughts about them not showing, saying that they're not showing up tonight. I think it, we have to be very careful because we want uh, the state medical examiner in, you know, in Baltimore and anywhere to be able to do their job um, unfettered by political um, that, you know, that sort of political whims and not under political pressure. Uh, if, if, we, if the goal is to make sure it's done right, uh, as frustrating as, that, as it must be, um, they need to operate in that space to get it right. Um, you know, I pushed to get, uh, you know, to, to get answers, but I, just as I mentioned with the other question, it is that balancing act. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure um, once the investigation is, o is over, if there are still questions, they'll make themselves available. Do you think it was wise for a uh, hearing to be called for tonight to look at You all want me to second guess everybody. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Well, hasn't the second guess the state's attorney, second guess the lieutenant governor, uh, Van it? Hollen, now the I council. <laughs> hasn't the autopsy already been you know, yes. done by the, by the medical examiner? So what would be the problem with releasing it? You would have to address it with them. I don't know. Right, but isn't that isn't that your understanding that the autopsy was actually done, completed many months ago? The investigation isn't done. Right, but the autopsy of the man's death, according to the examiner, was done quite a while ago. So but not really it's done. the autopsy is part of the investigation, which mm -hmm. is not done. Okay. Mayor, one so of the to one of the, the city council, uh, do you think they should have had a hearing, or do you think they should wait a little bit until the investigation is completed? I don't think it's useful to answer that. Okay. Mayor, apparently one of the complicating factors in the West case, mm -hmm. which um, is also in the prison, came to light in the prison case, mm -hmm. is the Law Enforcement Bill of Rights, which mm -hmm. allowed, it actually came in the, in the Select Lounge case too, I mean it was spoken, it was talked about. How frustrating is that? In other words, in order to come to a manner of death finding in the West case, you have to take into account witness statements, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the problems here is that apparently the police officers involved aren't saying a lot. Um, how frustrating is that from where you sit in terms of trying to hold people accountable, you know, get the right result when you have these protections that are built into collective bargaining agreements? Um, and how frustrating is that? It's certainly frustrating to me. Um, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, I certainly wasn't a part of the negotiation of the, the officer's bill of rights or the uh, process by which it was adopted years ago. So I don't know uh, the context uh, under which uh, the decisions that were made, you know, to incorporate different things into the bill of rights. Um, so I don't want to, again, second guess the, the process or the intent behind it. Um, but 
I, like many, are frustrated by it because we all want answers yesterday in all of the, in all of the cases that you, met, you mentioned. Do you think it needs to be reformed so that officers um, you know, can be compelled to, to answer questions about actions they take where the public is involved and there's death? I think there are ways that we can um, question officers and, and um, keep with the Officers' Bill of Rights that would be more productive, and I'm hoping to get there. So you're saying that you really need to take a different approach to that law that's not being handled correctly? I don't want to say not being handled correctly. I think that there are ways that we can do to, that, that we can improve uh, the process that haven't been explored, and we're, we're looking into it. Oh. Last week you were. Uh, looking into, wait, wait, can we just go back to that for a second? Because this, this gets to also the issue that has been a great frustration, I know, for the commissioner, which is it is very difficult to terminate. Um, in this department. So can you just expound upon that? About Only just to say that we're looking into how we can expand the, the um, questioning or the, the communication with officers and keep with the, their uh, Bill of Rights. Um, last week you announced the um, uh, economic um, development strategic plan uh, for the city. And um, there's also a plan uh, ongoing for the Lexington market. Um, a number of members of the media, including including us, have been trying to get material on the contracts and other things from the uh, Baltimore Development Corporation and have run into some barriers there. Um, the, the same group has talked about transparency and openness, and I don't understand if you could explain why these contracts um, with public taxpayers' money aren't open for the media and public inspection. Well, there's also uh economic competitiveness and um, again it's a balancing act and um, but if it went through the city's regular process it would be at the before the board of estimates and open public record is this a reform that should be made that when there's taxpayers I don't being believe that the reform budget, should include putting us at an economic disadvantage how would that put us at an economic disadvantage public disclosure public disclosure of information that um, that goes to the economic competitiveness of a jurisdiction. Th those are the contracts no, we're this talking is, about. this is the proposal that the city paid for the, 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 the bids. The bids are open and go before the Board of Estimates, but in this case, the uh, bids by the BDC are closed to public inspection. There, there are reasons uh, and there are exceptions to the um, the requirements for um, disclosure, and I'm sure this met one of them. I would have to talk to them specifically to find exactly what exception, but there are exceptions, and they're for good reasons uh, when they're in, when the exceptions are employed. And um, usually when it re relates to BDC, it's to maintain the competitiveness. So I would, you know, if, if you are interested in a follow-up conversation about that, I can, I can have my uh, team find out what exception it falls under. Well, what I was interested in is if you could, you know, clarify with BDC what is open to the public, because yep. things that used to be open to the public um, and inspection of public contracts um, that does not involve the cities, these would be bids, um, are now being closed, um, and it's, it's been a pattern now for the last um, six months for a number of organizations. So, well, so that's something to... you can review? Yep. Great. Can I ask, I think we've asked you this before, there's a piece in the New York Times today about New York, um, I think it's New York's Attorney General, yes, mm -hmm. is trying to get Verizon and, and et al. to explain why they won't um, allow Samsung to include uh, a kill switch on the phone, an anti-theft device that has been, there's been a lot of discussion about this. Um, do, what, we've, we've obviously had our share of smartphone thefts. Mm -hmm. Is there anything going on that you know of in Maryland um, or among the mayors on this topic? This is, um, apparently there's been some action in San Francisco. I mean, in your position with both the DNC, but mostly with the yeah, so when I know that I've spoken about this before mm -hmm. and said that I, I believe, and this was in uh, reference to the little kiosks. Yes, um, that's the Eco ATM. Right. Correct. Right. Um, and when I talked about it right. before, I said, right. I said that I think that there are certainly ways that the industry can um, make a stolen phone less valuable 
Um, with respect to what's being done in the uh, in the conference of mayors, I'm not 100% sure whether we've addressed it. We you know that we do resolutions on many topics to state our position. I'm not sure if we have. I can look into that. But I, I do think uh, that they can and should do more. The industry. Mayor, if I could ask about health care again. Mm -hmm. it, it, I know you don't want to second guess anyone, but are you concerned that people, still, many people in Baltimore can't still sign up because these web, this website doesn't work? I think that uh, there are lots of ways to get health care. I think the website is one. And one of the problems that we face in Baltimore is a digital divide where so many people who uh, are the same people that need health care also don't have access to the internet. And that's why we um, have the healthcare navigators in place. And while there's plenty of glitches uh, in the, the rollout of the website, the people are still working fine. Mayor, did you, I don't know if you read the article in the Washington Post about um, um, tax lien sales with Baltimore ranks number 14 in the country. Nope, didn't read it. Um, we, we do have one of the highest, 23,000. Are you concerned? It, it, obviously, the, the article revealed there's a lot of abuse that goes on, and I've covered cases myself. Are you concerned about that system in Baltimore where you're selling 20, 23,000 it was this year? Tax liens that, you know, probably usually target, you know, people in poorer communities and the community. Yeah, in Baltimore, they also, they also target, uh, you know, in, in communities where there's a, a lot of uh, vacancy and blight, it's also targeting absentee uh, owners as well. So, I mean, I don't know where we fall in the list of, you know, the per number of vacants and how that impacts it as well. You know, that when uh, it was brought to our attention that many homes were going on uh, the uh, tax sale for the um, estimated water bills and for um, uh, for things that we knew that um, you know were fixable and should be fixed we made those changes to make sure that for things like that that people's homes didn't go on the, the tax sale and we've made a lot of improvement there um, but without the context of knowing the other cities uh, whether they have the same issues we have with uh, when it comes to the amount of vacant uh, properties we have in the city I really can't speak to that. Do you think there are safeguards in place for homeowners here with our system? I think we have a number of safeguards and I think my administration has, has demonstrated a willingness to improve those safeguards. Last week there was um, uh, the court ruled that the uh, Lexington Square Partners super block suit um, against the city could move forward. Um, what is your assessment in terms of trying to um, deal both with the suit and getting the super block um, project underway again? You know, one of the things I'm really proud about with my administration is that we took a fresh set of eyes to the whole West Side, and um, I was not satisfied with the, pro the 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 progress that had been made. I brought in national experts that uh, have set us on a course for improvement. And if you take a look around uh, the West Side, whether it's the establishment of the University Partnership and the the great work that we've uh, done there, the establishment of the uh, Bromo Tower Arts. Uh, district and the work that's happening there, uh, the, the our efforts to really integrate the arts community, uh, whether it's the the artistic crosswalks or the um, the, the gallery space that's um, being made available, we're making a lot of progress in an area that had I, I think many of the people at the time that I started this work on the west side uh, shortly after becoming mayor. People were very uh, cynical and pessimistic about the opportunity or the, the, the possibility of it moving forward because it had um, been um, stagnant for so long. So I'm proud but of still, But it's still stagnant. I mean, that is this, still a glaring this, hole in the... In this the one project um, is still in litigation, and the reason why it's this far in the uh, litigation process is because my administration pushed. I wasn't satisfied with the, you know, the delays that the um, the developer kept um, giving us. I pushed for progress, pushed for progress, and now you know we're going to get it one way or the other, either by settlement or through the courts. Mayor, any reaction to Mr. Mayor stepping down the corrections, you know, had um, given the, you know, the problems with the general city? I think that um, my goal is to to have a partnership with the state that includes a, a, a correctional facility in our jurisdiction that is a complement and not a um, an obstacle to uh, reducing violent crime. Uh, I think um, the secretary uh, served honorably. Uh, he is uh, personally I've worked with him. He's a he's a great guy and. Um, you know, he's he should be proud of the, the work that he's done. I think that this this state, uh, with respect to the the um, the issue in the jail, you know, worked with 
uh, you know, federal investigators brought brought it to their attention, worked with the uh, federal investigators, and uh, addressed the issue. And he should be proud about that. Are you, do you favor that. replacing that the city jail? Say that again. Do you favor replacing it? I know that there's a task force that's pre preventing yeah, presenting I mean, recommendations today, but just as a matter of yeah, you know, I mean, kind of what you, your wish list would be. It's a state facility. Um, I mean, and, and you know, if I would have a wish list, it would be that we wouldn't need it. You know, so I, I don't know what the task force is looking at, but you know, I. My goal is to have a dramatically safer city, and reduce the need for that and the other uh, correctional facility. I think you know, when you take a look at other countries around the world and the number, of, uh, the percentage of their population that's incarcerated, you know that. Uh, far too many of our, our uh, citizens are incarcerated, and I believe that there are, there are better ways to deal with um, nonviolent uh, crimes and, and um, smarter ways that we're looking into to deal with the uh, more violent offenders, and we'll continue to work toward that. Do you believe the super block RFP process should be transparent? Yes. Well, I mean, will you ask it to go through a competitive bidding process that goes through the Board of Estimates, or? Um, the the RFP is going to take the whatever normal process it does for RFP. Thank you. BDC. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.